Hi everyone, I noticed that the videos which get the most interest on this channel are those about components and data binding. Now that's no surprise because components and the way we bind to them and how data binding works in Angular 2 is one, vastly different to Angular 1 and secondly it's the core of this language if you want to put it that way. We will create our whole application by putting together components in the end. So I thought it would be nice to have a special video dedicated to just this topic and show how you can nest components within each other and then bind data and let the data flow through those components to also show that unidirectional data flow we have in Angular 2. So let's get started. Okay, here we are. Um, first of all, I increased the font size a little bit, so it is hopefully is a bit easier to read now. Um, I'm sorry for any inconvenience and if you weren't able to completely follow along, I recommend you try rewatching it on a desktop PC and from now on I'll take care that the font size is appropriately sized. Now as you can see uh, in my browser here I got a little demo app running and this app basically is there to demonstrate how we can uh, combine um, components and how we can nest them and how we can let data flow through those components. Now, designing a website in components isn't really a new approach, right? Because, well, if at least you're writing some CSN, SS and HTML, you've been dividing up your web page in components since, since years. You have your header, you have your main section where you might have a state sidebar and then a content section where you will have articles and then you have your footer that are sections. And if you come from a, let's say, server-side language like PHP, you probably used a templating engine where you would also create your website from different components. So therefore, I find that, that Angular 2 follows a very logical and intuitive approach by using their components. Now, what is a component? A component is basically a directive, which also has a view or a template, which will be rendered to the screen. So like, let's say the ng-if directive is a directive, the component we create is also a directive, the app component or root component, for example. Now, the ng-if directive doesn't have a view attached to it. Yes, it might change the document due to the condition it has attached to it, but it won't add something new or it won't really render a complete view. It will just change something which we define in another template depending on a condition. Whereas a component has its complete own template attached to it. And this will be rendered to the screen. So in this case, I got my master component here with this uh, light lemon yellow uh, background color. And this master component, if we have a look at it, well, it, it has a selector of master component. And here's the template. That's what will be rendered to the view. The template is the heading, uh, this input field and the button here, and the, those two components here. Now we can already see an advantage of this component approach. I'm reusing components here. I'm reusing my level one component within my master component. So in my master component template here, I got one level one component, two level one components. And those components, that, that's one and the same component, namely the level one component I defined here. Let me increase the font size a little bit more. So here I have my level one component and this component has a level two component nested inside it. Now that level two component in the end is, let's say, the ending point of our journey and it only has an input field and a button. So that's how we nest components and how we reuse components and how we can put together our website from the different components we created. So we can really create a toolbox, so to say, with all the functionalities we need in our page and then we just add them together. And through data binding, we have a powerful means to connect those components and yeah, to make sure that not each component is a separate part standing for its own and having nothing to do with the other components, but instead, as I said, connecting them with them. Now, when it comes to that connection, it's very important to, to plan your app correctly because in general, data flow, flow in, uh, in Angular 2 is unidirectional and it always flows, flows from parent 
to child to child to child. So we get it from top to bottom and we can implement something to have it flow from bottom to top, but that will only be possible through events. So the general data flow is from top to bottom. I can demonstrate you this uh, in this example here. Let me enter some, some text here in my master component and then click the change button. You now see every text field here changed. Why is that the case? In my master component, I have this change button. This button has a click event attached to it, which we call the onChange method. I pass the value of the text input. And text input is just a local variable I created here and attached to this input. If you're not sure about um, the, the data binding syntax with the parentheses here and what a local variable is, I strongly recommend you check out my channel and my whole tutorial seri series I have on Angular 2, which is still growing, um, where I will go much more into detail regarding that concepts. So back to this, I call this onChange method here, which gets the value, which is just the value of our input field here, through that local variable where we access the value. And then I set my property text, which I got here, equal to that value. Now that property text is bound to my input text here, but I won't need it as of now, that would work even without that binding here. More it is bound to that text directive I have on my level one component. So I have it on both level one components. I'm using my text directive to pass the text property. So the text in the quotation marks refers to the text property, whereas the text in the squared brackets refers to the text directive, which I created in the level one component. Now it might be a bit confusing, but in the end it's always to read this way. This is, let's say, the, the selector of our directive and this is what we, what we pass or what, what happens, so to say. Let's have a look at our level one component. That is where we pass the data through this text in the squared brackets. Now in the level one component, I have defined that this component can receive inputs through that squared bracket syntax of, in this case, only the text. I defined the text directive here. This line defines it. This makes it available in the master com component to use the squared bracket text. I can't enter what I want. I can't enter test here and try to pass something because test isn't defined here on the, on the level one component. I only defined text. So let me get rid of that so that we don't get an error. Now, that means, okay, I can receive some data bound to the text directive. Now, what do I do with this data? Um, I just use it. It is automatically bound to the text property here. So those names have to match. If they don't, I have to provide an alias that's possible, but in this case, I'll, I'll leave it that way. So property with the name text matches always to an input, which has the name text, which then again has to be matched here. So if I were to change this to text two, for example, I would have to change it here and then here. Otherwise the whole binding would break, but I'll just reword that. So, I bound to this text property now through this inputs element, which on the same time allowed me to use the squared bracket syntax and send data to that component. And that is why out of the box, without any of that code, we'll come to that soon, it works that if I enter the text here and change it, it will flow to all my components, just because of that and that. And then the fact that I bind my input element to that text property here. I set the value to the value of the text property. Otherwise it wouldn't display automatically. The data would still flow into the template, but we wouldn't see it here because we wouldn't output it at any place. Now I got the same procedure again. I got this on change method here and when I click on it, um, it will change the text value, as the, the, the text property to the value, just like we did in the master component. 
it also does one other thing. It emits an event here. We'll have a look at this in a second. Let me first come back to how the data gets passed to the level two component. As I said, when we click on change, we set this text and it is also this text property and it is also set due to the fact that we pass it from the master component. So those both um, actions kind of set this text property here. Now I'm also passing it to the level two component. Exactly the same way I passed it from the master to the text one or level one, I'm now passing it to level two. And therefore level two, I have also my inputs and my text property, which again has to match. And then I output it in my element, in my input element here. And that's why if I change it in the master, it automatically flows, flows through all children because it gets set here. This automatically is, or it is bound to this level two text directive and therefore it automatically flows through to the text two. So that is the parent to child to child data flow I talked about. As you can see, here we got a sibling and therefore, well, it's a child of the master component. It flows through here. Now, I will change it here in my first level one component to text five. And I will, I will change it and then let's see what happens. It again changed in all the places. To the bottom is clear because we're passing the text property. So now we're passing it on because we're binding with that text directive here. I think that's easy. But how we did, did we do to let it flow back? I just said that it flows from top to bottom, right? Well, as I said in the beginning, we can trigger an event which will propagate or which will fire on our master component then and which allows us to change the value in our master component. And that's one way on how to work our way up that node hierarchy. So we do this by in our level one component here by setting an output, which basically says this property is, is an event, so to say. It outputs data from our component, whereas an input basically says our component can receive data. The output, output decorator here says our component can emit data. And be aware, I could also write it this way. Outputs changed would work exactly the same way as you see. Um, I'll just revert it because I wanted to show you both ways. You can also do the same with input here. You could also specify input. So just wanted to tell you that. Now our output is changed, creates a new event emitter. Now that has to be imported from the Angular 2 core package and basically allows us to yeah, emit events. So to create a custom event, so to say. This is fired when I click this change button in our level one component here. I still fire the on change element and I set my text property like I do in my master in my level two component, but I also fire the event I, by just calling the emit method on this change property. And I emit the value, so the new value I got. In my master component, I have this changed um, event set up on my level one component and changed is just the name I got here. And it has to be the same name, just with the inputs where text has to be text. Here it has also to be changed in the master component. In squared brackets, or in, excuse me, in, in parentheses, because we have an event, and then I call the onChange event um, method, or the onChange method and pass the event. That's important. Dollar sign event is always the parameter passed by Angular 2, so you have to use that. The onChange method is the same I called up here by my if I click that button, because it always receives the same, just a value, a string um, of any of those input fields. Therefore, I just get this value 
which I basically pass here in my level one component and set it to the text property, which will therefore change my text property. And that's why if I type something here, it will also change in the sibling component because it will flow up to my master and then it will flow back down. Data flow. You, that, that's basically how data flows in Angular 2 applications. And if you know that, you can figure out ways to manipulate it in a way um, you want it to be. Now I defined the same in the level 2 component. I also got this change, the event emitter, and I emit this, um, this event when I change something here like T2. Now you might notice, let me actually zoom in a little bit so that this becomes clearer. You might notice that if I write something here in the level one component, it changes everywhere. If I write something in the level two component, test changed by level two, it only changes in the level one component. It doesn't flow to my master and the sibling is not is also not touched in any way. That is, again, because of the way data flows in Angular 2 applications. We're triggering an event here in our level 2 component, emitting it, so to say, which is then yeah, tr triggered in a level 1 component, or which is then fetched in a level 1 component due to that changed um, event I defined here. This changes the text property in the level 1 component, but it can't go any higher than that because we, we're not emitting it here. It would flow further if I were to call this changed emit in my on level two changed method, which is fired when level two component changes its value. Then it would propagate up to the next layer, which calls or which fetches that event, handles that event, listens to it. But I, I don't have this method and master one or the master component isn't listening to any events fired by level two it's listening to events fired by level one components. So that is why the data flows down into all children, but flows up only one layer or only to the layer which catch that event or which listen to it. Okay, so that's the basics or that are Angular 2 components and data flow in a nutshell. Obviously there is much more to it. If you're interested in more, be sure to check out my complete Angular 2 uh, tutorial series on my channel. Follow me on Facebook under Mindspace channel and yeah, be sure to tune into the next videos. Have a nice day. Bye.